I was um, uh, faculty at the Northwest Indian College in Bellingham, Washington. I was coming from the University of California, Santa Barbara. And I was hired by the college to help developing an environmental science program, which was National Science Foundation funded. And then I came across Leroy's work and so I invited in 97, 98, and he invited me here. And my work at the Indian College was very specific. It was to support the development of this tribal environmental management program. So I invited Leroy to the school. We talked and he said, you have to come to the dialogue. And I didn't have the faintest idea what dialogue was. And so I came and the first dialogue I attended was in the Pueblo Museum in, in Albuquerque. Well, it was very um, different, you know, to what I was used to because there's no, there's not a product. I mean, you don't show, you don't give a paper. You just talk, and then by the end of the third day, then you go home and say, so what is true? You just go home and there's nothing. So, being the hardcore scientist I was, it was very difficult to to feel comfortable that you just go home. It was very, it was very extraordinary, and now I'm used to it. Then, you know, so what's the outcome? There's no outcome. When I came here, you know, I came with all the, this energy, not always positive, from my science background, and, you know, what's the cabinet, and people back and forth, and the first dialogues were very intense, I mean, of an intensity that became physical, and a lot of people was left behind. They were never asked to come back because it was so intense. And I declared myself incompetent. I was going through a very difficult period at one point, 2002, and three. And then Leroy, you know, asked me to come back because, you know, he, why are you not coming? And I said, you know, I just can't. I mean, I can't take it. And he said, well, not anymore. You have to come back. Otherwise, you know, we won't invite you because you have to be here. Okay. So here, you know, uh, as Leroy used to say in those times, you leave your shoes outside, you leave your infrastructure outside and just walk in and just talk. It was very, you know, kind of disturbing. But uh, by the third time I was here, I got used to it. So now I'm perfectly comfortable. I don't need anything to... I will take back what I talked, what I listened mostly. I don't need anything from the dialogue itself. Except the contact with the people that I that have become my brothers and my friends and my my fathers. I mean Leon, Leroy. Now the other guys, I mean they're my family now. Yeah. I would say that, you know, deep listening, you know, as it has been defined here, is the key. You don't come offering support. You go and you ask what do you need. You know, it's a it's a complete reversal of roles. You know, we are used to think of would you go and help? No. You go and ask what do you need? And that's what you do. And I guess, you know, um, well, I'm convinced that this dialogue helps to do that. Although, you know, in particular case, being from Chile, you know, the, 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 this social element is always present, this political element, which is very strong. It was always present, you know. I see it vividly, you know, relieved by the people that comes here, which has many, many of them are very confused about it, I mean. So, I, su I suppose that for many of the people that attend the meeting, this, um, Changing, this change in terms of, okay, go and ask, what do you need, is, makes the whole difference. The short distance between your psyche and the, and the intuition that is morally necessary to exercise change by behaving differently and by investing really into the value of next generations. So, you know, this is, a, this is a, a problem of everybody in the world. Our psyche, our biology, is not 
built to deal with the long distant future. Our society is built to deal with tomorrow, with next month. Now that we live in this economic system, our society is able to deal with, I will leave this to my children. Nobody thinks in terms of their grandchildren or great-grandchildren. So we need to become a different um, species in the sense that if we don't invest in certain generations, we, we're going to disappear. I would like to think that I have this always. And I came to this country very young when I was 16. I went back to Chile and I became a, probably the youngest teacher in the Catholic University. I went to a very rigorous science school and we were very successful sending students to this country to get their PhDs. We were so successful that nobody went back to Chile, which was such a paradox. So, you know, I had this vision, not so deliberate as I have it today, to apply my science, to develop good science programs in Chile such that they would, you know, have a multiplying effect in society, in education, and everything else. But then when I realized what I had done, it was a monster, you know, everything had been successful, that they stay here. It doesn't work that way. So, you know, this is very analogous to what could happen, and it's happening in Indian country. If you review where most of Native American PhDs are higher, they're not in tribal college. They're not working in their community, they're working for Harvard, they're working for UBC or UNM, which is, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying that's what happens. You know, how can you contrast a salary in an Indian college of 35,000 bucks for nine months to 100,000 bucks in Dartmouth or University of Rhode Island and whatever they want them? Because of the kind of work I did, I felt very close to the kind of questions they were doing with the dialogue, colonization, political oppression, socioeconomic responsibility, socioeconomic development. And through this, uh, through the work at the college, I was, I felt very close to that, which was, you know, barely connected to me when I was at Santa Barbara, but it had been connected to me all my life that I, that I worked in Chile, you know. I, I never saw my heart science different to what I felt that I should do for the well-being of, of people, particularly the most needed ones, which I wasn't very... It wasn't resolved in my mind really as a, as a political statement, but now it is. So that's what I'm doing now, deliberately. And then, you know, just spread the word. The only thing I would add is to thank SEED for sponsoring these dialogues that we've had in Albuquerque for the past number of years now and encourage them to continue with them because they're really excellent forums for knowledge exchange and intellectual nurturing and so forth. And they have just been very good therapy for people who do participate in the dialogue. So I want to thank Seed for being a sponsor and carrying that tradition on.